Hello guys and welcome to another Minecraft tutorial. You guys might know 119, the wild update just dropped and the advancement of getting every single effect at the same time, 27 to be precise, called how did we get here, just got significantly harder because you're forced to do it in the deep dark biome. So you don't have to necessarily find an ancient city. It just provides more space. Plus you can get a god apple easier. And in this video, I want to show you guys how you can get the advancement. How did we get here in 119? This video is also fully chapterized. So feel free to skip to a certain part. So, here you can see all the items that you will need in order to complete this advancement. In general, I recommend having an elytra and plenty of rockets. First, you need to collect 164 gold blocks for a full beacon. You'll also need one more ingot to power it. Then you'll need a conduit, 16 dark prismarine, 9 dirt blocks, and a wither rose. For the dolphin, I highly recommend giving it a name tag. Then you'll need a lead to transport it and you'll need a fence to leash it. The fishing rod will make transporting the shulker significantly easier. Then you'll need a bow with spectral arrows and a silk touch tool, preferably a hoe. Two water buckets are required to create an infinite water source. Then you'll need a brewing stand with 10 bottles, a god apple and the redstone dust, and a suspicious stew crafted with an azure bluette to give you the blindness effect. For brewing the potions, you'll need two blaze powder, three nether wart, three gunpowder, three fermented spider eyes, one sugar, one golden carrot, two puffer fish, one rabbit's foot, and one phantom membrane. I also highly recommend bringing along some wool to clear out skulk shriekers and skulk sensors in the ancient city. Some TNT might also come in handy to box in the shulker and free it even when you have mining fatigue because it's insta mineable. To clear all the effects after doing the advancement, a milk bucket will also be super useful. Then you should bring along 40 to 60 obsidian to build portals and three boats to transport the shulker and that is all you need there is four main structures required to execute how do we get here try and find the structures as closely to spawn as possible it will be a time save later make sure to build a nether portal at every structure except the village and note down the nether coordinates of the portals one more thing it's super super important that you can get from the ocean monument portal to the ancient city portal without having to mine anything you will need a pillager outpost alongside a village to play the raid in then you'll need an ocean monument and, of course, an ancient city. In order to find ancient cities a little bit easier, you want to open up the F3 menu and look for the E value, which stands for erosion. Ideally, that value should be as low as possible. Negative 0.8 is kind of what you're looking for. This is more likely to occur where mountains or hills are. All you want to do then is look for a cave entrance, go into it, and once you find Skulk, just explore. It might take some time though. For this part, you will need the wool and the silk touch tool. As I already said, you don't have to necessarily be in an ancient city. You just need to find a skulk shrieker and have a skulk sensor. Basically, you just want to clear every skulk sensor and obtain at least one with silk touch and leave one remaining skulk shrieker so that there's enough space on at least one side for the entire setup and the beacon. So you basically just place wool around the sensors and shriekers you want to mine. And it's useful to know that skulk shriekers only activate when either a skulk sensor activates it or when the player walks right on top of the shrieker. As you can see now, I've cleared out everything but one shrieker. For this, you will need 164 gold blocks, an additional gold ingot and the beacon itself. The next step is to set up the beacon. For a full powered beacon, you basically start off with a 9x9 layer, add a 7x7 layer on top, a 5x5 layer on top of that, and finally a 3x3 layer 
and you'll end it off with the beacon. The beacon can't activate though if its beam doesn't reach the sky. So what you have to do next is dig a hole all the way up to the surface where the beacon is. Then you need to set the effects on the beacon. I kind of forgot to do it, so I did it after Shalka transport. But here you select haste, regeneration, and you're good to go. For this, you'll need two water buckets, 16 dark prismarine, the conduit, and the nine dirt. In order to set up the conduit, you're going to dig a three by three hole that's four blocks deep, place dirt at the bottom. Then you want to create this dark prismarine ring, put the conduit in the center, create an infinite water source and fill it all up with water. If you did everything right, the conduit should activate. For this, you will need 20 to 40 obsidian, 2 to 3 boats, a fishing rod, a bow or crossbow with arrows, some wool blocks and some TNT, one additional blaze powder, one additional gunpowder if you want to make splash potions of healing. First though, build a nether portal in the ancient city and note down the coordinates in the nether. For the shulker, want to find an end gateway close to an end city and if you go into one of these end city ships, you can use the brewing stand to put in blaze powder to power it and gunpowder to make it splash potions of instant healing. You can also sprint punch a boat to move it forward. All you want to do now is to boat the shulker through the gateway. This is wrong and this is right. The hitbox of the bobber needs to be inside of the shulker and not on top of it. Otherwise, you have haven't hooked the boat properly. Then just put the fishing rod in the offhand, levitate away or fly away with your elytra and reel it in. If you want to stay above a certain Y level, you can also place a block every second block and boat over it. And if the shulker hits itself a lot, just make sure to splash a potion of instant healing at it once in a while. Once you're at the gateway, build a small platform for the shulker to land on and use a rocket, fly it with the elytra and reel the shulker onto the platform. And then just steer the boat through the gateway. You want to make sure that the shulker can't get stuck anywhere. Then you want to build the safety bridge. So if the shulker doesn't get up to the end island, it still lands safely. And you can also get into the boat mid air and control it to make it land safely. The next step is to put an empty boat through the bedrock fountain first. So when the shulker ends up in the overworld, it will automatically be in a boat again. Once you have your shulker inside the bedrock fountain, you basically want to shoot an arrow at the boat and the shulker will teleport. The shulker will end up at world spawn. This is where you want to build your next nether portal. If your deep dark isn't too far away, you can just do this, then go through and place boats on either side of it. Then boat the shulker into the nether portal, destroy the boat with a pickaxe or an axe and the shulker will end up in one of the boats that you've placed on the nether side. Then just boat the shulker through a 2x2 two two tunnel to your other nether portal and do the same thing. If the deep dark is rather far away from spawn though, it makes more sense to build the spawn nether portal above the nether bedrock ceiling. This will also make dolphin transport a lot easier if your deep dark isn't right next to an ocean. But more on that once we do the dolphin. Basically, you just want to find a bedrock block at Y126 or 127, you place the ladders, you Pearl through, jump a couple times, and you're on the nether roof. Now you want to build another portal exactly where the other one was and go through. Now you need to deactivate the portal below bedrock. You simply ignite the TNT one second after entering the portal and load the nether chunks by throwing some items through the portal. And then you should always end up on the nether roof when you go through the nether portal. Now you simply get the shulker through the nether portal, then build another nether portal where the deep dark is and get the shulker through that portal as well and you're good to go. Then just boat the shulker next to where the conduit is. Then you want to block in the shulker using wool blocks and on the side of the conduit block it off using TNT. For brewing and all the consumables you will need a brewing stand, 10 bottles, a god apple, one redstone dust, a brown mushroom, a red mushroom, a bowl, an azure bluette, then two blaze powder, three nether warts, 
three gunpowder, one fermented spider eye, one sugar, one golden carrot, two puffer fish, one rabbit's foot, and one phantom membrane. Additionally, once you're done with how did we get here, you want to have a milk bucket as well to clear all the effects. Then place the brewing stand, fill all 10 bottles up with water, take nine of the water bottles and brew them up with a nether wort. Don't forget to power the brewing stand with a blaze powder. Once you have all nine awkward potions, you want to put two back into the brewing stand and brew them up with sugar. Repeat the same procedure with the golden carrot and the phantom membrane. For transporting the dolphin, it will be quite useful to give it the slow falling effect as well. To be on the safe side, you want to increase the duration to four minutes which you will do with an additional redstone dust then you want to put the remaining water bottle a potion of swiftness and a potion of night vision into the brewing stand and brew it up with a fermented spider eye then you want to make three more potions with the rabbit's foot the blaze powder and the puffer fish this step is only really necessary for the slow falling potion you give to the dolphin but it's still more convenient if you do it to all the potions. Because I've mentioned that you only need three gunpowder, one potion can't be made into a splash potion. In this case, that will be the second slow falling potion. Lastly, you need to craft the sus stew. Just combine a red and brown mushroom with a bowl and an azure bluette in the crafting grid. You can activate a shrieker three times without spawning the warden. Just keep in mind though that you only have the darkness effect for 13 seconds when you activate the shrieker without summoning a warden. If you have a warden nearby, you'll have the darkness effect forever, so that might make it slightly easier. If you're scared about summoning the warden, you can dig a tunnel into the wall, like 80 blocks long, uh, if you need to run from it. For this, you will need the splash potion of slow falling, the fence, the lead, 10 obsidian alongside a flint and steel and a renamed name tag. If you want, just go through the nether portal in the deep dark again, build a nether portal where the ocean monument is and get the dolphin into the nether that way or you use the spawn portal as I am doing it. Before you search for a dolphin, make sure to prepare the spot where the dolphin will be. For that, you simply dig a four deep hole, place a fence at the bottom, put water on top and you're good to go. You can dig out this staircase, so it's a bit easier to leash the dolphin. As I already said, I have an ocean monument directly at spawn, so I don't need to build an extra portal for that. And it's an ocean, so that's where dolphins are. Pressing F3 and B to activate the hitboxes makes it a lot easier to find dolphins. Then you just put the dolphin on a lead. Once the dolphin is out of the water, you have two minutes until the dolphin starts taking damage. Give it a slow falling potion, drag it through the portal and fly it to the deep dark portal at a moderate angle. In order to fly the dolphin properly, you need to use quite a lot of rockets so you have a constant speed. Once you start slowing down and accelerating again, the lead will rip apart. But that's why the dolphin has slow falling. Then you just have to leash it onto the fence. The dolphin might be a bit tricky to get in. Give it the name tag and seal the hole off. Something that I'm doing wrong here is you need to make sure that the dolphin doesn't have any item to play around with. It might cause some problems. But you can just sprint, swim in the conduit to test if you get dolphin's grace. Now we get to the most exciting part, the execution. For this, you will basically need all the potions, all the consumables, a bow with a couple spectral arrows, a wither rose, the skulk sensor, and the milk bucket, and gear to defeat an entire raid. So how this will work, basically, we're going from the longest to the shortest effect. Throughout all this, you need to make sure that you have lost at least two and a half hunger bars and are still able to sprint. So you want to start off by killing a banner guy at the outpost. And if you happen to see a second one, put it in a boat. Then you want to head to the nearest village where you can turn down the render distance and the simulation distance to limit the boundaries in which the raid can spawn. And as soon as the raid starts, Started, make sure to trap at least one villager in one of their houses. Keep in mind that you can also use the bell at the village center to locate the remaining raiders. Then defeat the raid, kill another banner guy at the outpost. Then you want to head to the monument, get mining fatigue, which only lasts five minutes. Head back to the deep dark 
through the nether. Then grab everything out of the chest and put the spectral arrows into the first inventory slot and make sure again that you lost at least two and a half hunger bars. A good way to get hungry is to sprint jump against blocks above your head. Then sip the slow falling potion, splash all other potions onto your head for maximum duration. Then you hop into the water pool where the conduit is, eat the god apple, Place the sensor close to the shrieker, break the TNT to activate the sensor, dust the shrieker, and now you have 13 seconds to do the rest if you didn't summon the warden. I do the puffer fish now, but you can also do it after the spectral arrow. For that, you just wait until the shulker hits you. I actually didn't get hit here. You aim with your bow straight up and do a weak bow shot. Here I actually missed the first shot. Second shot hits me to give me the glowing effect. Then you dive down, make sure to sprint so you get dolphin's grace. You eat the suspicious stew and place the witherers. And then I got hit by shulker. I hope this didn't confuse you because the shulker actually hit me last, but I'll show a second attempt. This is my second attempt where I did summon the warden at the very end though, after completing the advancement already. And if that happens, you just go into your safety tunnel as I showed in the intro and explained in chapter eight. Got hit by the shulker properly and did the puffer fish after the spectral arrow, which is my preferred order. So after getting the three main effects, I sip the slow falling potion, I smack all the potions onto my head, I make everything ready, I dive into the conduit, I eat the god apple, I place the sensor, break the TNT to activate the shrieker, then I get hit by shulker, I hit myself with the glowing arrow, I eat the puffer fish, the suspicious stew, and place the witherers. And that's how it should be. Then you can drink the milk bucket, and here, yeah, I actually summoned the warden. But I actually summoned the warden when getting out of the water, so during how to get here, I actually still used the 13 seconds of darkness. And that is it, guys. I'm totally aware these strategies might change. There might be an easier way to do it at some point. But this is from my speedrunning experience. This is from my Minecraft knowledge. Currently, the most efficient way to do it. Maybe not the safest, but the most efficient. I know there was a lot of information in this video, so feel free to watch it again. Big shout out to Elden slash Eli Zaku, where I first saw how we get here getting completed in 119. And also a big shout out to T-Wags for publishing the chat how to get here setup. And final shout out to the mansion that I found randomly. Obviously, this video took a lot of time to make, so I'd appreciate any kind of support. And feel free to check me out on all my socials. I stream multiple times weekly on Twitch and I'm super active on many other platforms. So if you want to catch more from my side, feel free to check there. And that's it from me. Hope you all enjoyed. Let me know in the comments if you guys have any questions. And with that said, peace out guys.